Welcome back. It's the beginning of a new era at the University of Connecticut, yeah, the school's new president. Was inaugurated barely a week ago, actually. Yep. Uh, he's already making big news with his proposal for free college tuition starting next year for in-state students whose families have annual incomes of less than $50,000. Now, when Fox 61 News visited the store's campus right after the announcement, naturally we found a lot of positive reaction among students, but not so much by people at the state capitol, where Senate Republican leader Len Fasano immediately expressed concern about what it would cost and how it would be paid for. Well, let's find out because we have the man. First, our <laughs> congratulations to the 16th president of the University of Connecticut, Tom Katsalaeus. Nice to have you. Welcome to the program. <laughs> Thank you. It's great to be here. All right, yeah, so tell us how people are going to qualify. Would this start next year with yes, the fall semester the fall, next year? with entering freshmen in the fall. Right. And uh, who, is, so incoming freshmen, and what about people transferring from somewhere else? Or Right, right. So transfers, entering freshmen, any any student coming from a family with less than fifty thousand dollars a year in annual income and typical assets, uh, we're going to stretch our financial aid offering to them to to make tuition completely free. How much money do you think that's going to cost? Have you done estimates? Yeah, the estimate is it's um, about a million dollars a year per co cohort. So rolling it in over four years, it'll be about four million dollars a year at steady state. So it's pretty significant. Uh, it's ambitious. Uh, but it really expands our mission as a public university to provide access to an affordable and high quality education to the entire state. Is the Yukon Foundation taking care of a lot of, a lot of this? Uh, well, the, the foundation is our fundraising arm and mm -hmm. so this is the, the means by which we plan to um, raise the money that we need to, to fulfill the commitment. So we'll, we'll need to raise uh, spendable and endowment funds. So the goal is over a period of four years to raise $100 million in new uh, need-based financial aid and in an endowment that will throw off at, at typical interest rates now, is, it, is it official that this is going forward next year? We're committed. I mean, you don't have anybody else to seek approval from? No, no. It's, uh, yeah, the purview of the president worked very hard with the, um, with the leadership team to do the estimates, to, to come up with a plan for how we could, how we could do this. Um, shared a little bit of the idea, you know, with uh, legislators and, and the governor and, and others, but, but really we announced it October 4th at the inauguration. Now, some, uh, some people are already getting financial aid. Some that's students right. are. So yeah. how would you uh, yeah, work so that out in conjunction yeah, with Yeah, no, that's a great question. Tuition. So um, actually Connecticut has a, a very strong financial aid program already. We, we already give about $100 million, more than $100 million a year in combination of need and merit-based financial aid. So this is stretching that. Particularly, it's a big stretch for those in that kind of low-income bracket um, below the 50K range. What do you think is the biggest challenge for UConn? You're coming in, you know, we do have problems here in Connecticut. Our budget, UConn is tied to that, you yeah. know, obviously you depend on some state aid. Yeah. What's the biggest challenge? Yeah, I mean, it'd be easy for me to just answer. The glib answer is it's always is financial, but I don't find that very interesting. I, I am an engineer by background, and you know, I, I think of all problems as, as sort of opportunities within a constrained specs environment. And uh, so the financial is just part of the specs, but the opportunities are tremendous. I mean, this university has got tremendous momentum over the last two decades. It's been one of the fastest rising public universities in, in the country. The state has made big investments in capital infrastructure. It's a great opportunity now to go fill those with real, real talent, talented faculty, talented students, and really take this university to the next level. So I've, I've posed the challenge to the faculty, staff, and students is, you know, three, in the form of three formative questions. How can we double research and scholarship uh, across the board at the university? Uh, how can we more intentionally align with the economic needs and priorities of the, the state and the governor? And then how can we bring uh, life transformative education to every undergraduate student at the scale of 24,000? So this is, this is a grand challenge of education. All, all of us, our peers, uh, offer life transformative educational experiences, the opportunity to apply what you've learned in the classroom to an authentic problem, 
plus emotionally supportive mentors of the type that care about your hopes and dreams. But to do that for intentionally for every student, no university has done that. And, I, and I've suggested that if UConn can do it, it will not only benefit her own students, but will lead the country and where liberal arts education needs to go in the 21st century. I, uh, now, is this something that came to you as an idea, or was it uh, something that was suggested by some faculty member or some of the other people you were talking about a yeah, moment ago? You know, it, it really fomented in um, about 2015, there was a survey by Gallup Oh. Uh, Gallup and Purdue, they surveyed 100,000 graduates that were between one and 40 years out. And they asked them questions about their well-being and work engagement later in life. And then they correlated that to the kinds of experiences that they had as, as undergraduates. Mm. And they found this very strong correlation. And there were a group of, of educators, uh, my friend, good friend Rick Miller at Olin College and I, looking at that data. And of course, we started, as, as all educators do, with saying, well, how did my school do? And then we started <laughs> to think about it a little more. And we said, well, wait yeah. a minute. You know, If this is such a profound correlation, shouldn't we be more intentional about bringing those kinds of experiences to every student? And how could we do that? And so we, we formed a consortium of uh, about a dozen schools. And now uh, Connecticut is one of the leads of that consortium. And we're going to be you know, asking the faculty to think about you know, how do we leverage the strengths that we have at UConn already? And we have a, a nationally renowned honors program, for example. Can we extend those kinds of experiences to every student? Things like that that we have to build on. What were you most excited about when UConn came up in your realm? I'm not sure if they contacted you or you contact them or how that search works, but when you heard UConn, what were you most excited well, about? Well, you know, I, I had a really positive impression of UConn as a, as a top public flagship. I was aware of its momentum. You could see things going upward. And, uh, you know, I'd come from University of Virginia most recently, mm -hmm. and we were, we were looking at uh, enhancing a writing program there. And we looked at, uh, we looked for models of best practices across the country, and one of those was UConn. So I'd already done some looking into UConn and recognized that they had real strengths in certain areas. And then uh, I came and I met with this, you know, the, the search firm invited me out and I came and met with the search committee and just hit real resonance with, with that committee. And um, there was a sense of um, community and school spirit that was really extraordinary. And of course, I've, I've always been drawn to the broad academic context university. I believe in the value proposition of research universities, uh, particularly the mission of a public. And that's what we're, we're trying to enhance with Connecticut commitment. And so for me, it just seemed like a perfect fit at this moment and in this university's history. You, you brought up uh, research as, yeah. as a key. Yeah. And I think most college leaders, uh, university leaders, realize that it is a key to, right. to growth in the future and people wanting to right. be part of something. Is right. there a particular area of research that you think you, uh, uh, UConn is uniquely qualified to handle and expand on? Well, there are a number of areas of strength. Uh, my goal is to double research and scholarship across the board. And I, I use the word and scholarship because I want to emphasize it's not just about the single metric of research funding. In some fields in humanities and business, mm. do, uh, outside funding is not a part of the scholarship process. So it's about doubling it across the board. But I think we'll be a better uh, research university, better able to fulfill our mission, be better able to serve our students if we can achieve that goal over seven to 10 years. The idea is to uh, you know, attract uh, the be best possible research faculty, the, mo the most distinguished and diverse that we can so that students have the ability to learn from those who are creating new knowledge, not simply passing on the knowledge of others. And that's really the distinguisher of a research university over a teaching college. And in, a, you know, in today's age where there's so many complex societal problems that are as yet unsolved, having that insight, that wisdom, that passion, that perspective from faculty who are discovering new knowledge is so critical in, in addressing these unsolved problems. Got to ask you this real quick because sure. I know you have had two coaches that have been very, you know, at points vocal about this, but do you think college Ashley athletes should be allowed to get endorsement deals? Oh, so I, you know, I was, I had the benefit of hearing your nice interview with Senator Murphy just before mine and, and, uh, you know, I, I read his very nice article in the Chronicle of Higher Ed and I, I do come down a little differently on that. Um, so, you know, we are one, we are great, a great university because we are one university, right? We, we all give to it in different ways and we all take from it in different ways, but it, that's what makes us great. And the analogy in the classroom is, you know, we have faculty who teach large intro classes, you know, maybe an intro biology class of 400 students. If we started paying them based on the tuition revenue that each individual player or, or teacher 
uh, was bringing in. Those would be the highest paid faculty at the university. And then we wouldn't have the resources to hire those, to, to hire those faculty who work in the, the small seminars at the upper division that's so valuable for students. So we're, 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 you know, it is a big industry, but it, it really is going to benefit the whole. And now applying for the free tuition, yeah. uh, how complicated is that process going to be and when do they have to apply by? Yeah, so we're, we're trying to make it as simple as possible. So it'll be, it'll be basically no different for a fr freshman applicant and their family from what they've done before. This is a, a, a last dollar top up. So they would get their, they would go through their normal process. We would look and see if they qualified based on these criterion of the 50K mm -hmm. and typical assets and then we would top it up from uh, university resources that were drawn from philanthropy uh, to bring it up to free. And so, um, the, you know, there, there were a couple of motivations for this. One was to actually enhance the aid that we provided to students, but another motivation was to make it simpler and make the message clearer to uh, lower income students, in particular to students from first generation families who might think that a top tier university like UConn is not for them, that they can't afford it, that mm -hmm. you know, it's elite, uh, all of those things that you hear about in the, in the news. You basically send the message in a clear, clean, simple way that no, you can come here and not only that, we want you here. And so that's, that was part of the goal in, in creating this program. Right. And uh, would uh, people have to reapply every year? No. Uh, for, no. For the aid? No. no, it just becomes part of their package. From there on no. No. It's gonna be interesting okay. to see how it plays out. We ran out of time, so we gotta go. Okay. <laughs> uh, the new UConn president, president here, Dr. Thomas Katsuleas, we really appreciate you coming on and talking with us. Thank All you, the Jen. best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Keep you. thinking. <laughs> Thank you.